Welcome to Pitch in the Zone, a weekly gathering of coaches that help one presenter with a three-minute pitch. Our coaches this week include Nathan Gold, hailing from San Francisco. He specializes in high-stakes presentation coaching. We have Michael Marchak in Chicago. He's a CTO, an author, a speaker, and also an angel investor. We have Rick Pollack, a presentation coach and trainer, joining us from Boston, Massachusetts. And also from Boston, Massachusetts is Stuart Pink. Uh, he has been uh, a firm part of Pitch in the Zone for the last couple of sessions. And I always value his feedback tremendously. So welcome back, Stuart. And from Thailand, joining us, Massimo Peroncelli, a serial entrepreneur with a lot of experience in the startup world. And our presenter today is Alex Shevelenko. His company is called Relay2. Alex, welcome to Pitch in the Zone. And before we begin, tell us a little bit about who the intended audience is for your pitch so that we can put on the right hat and judge your pitch from that audience's point of view. You bet, Claudio, and thank you everyone for pitching in with your advice and time in advance. You are one of the audiences that we actually are targeting. We're looking for experts in high stakes B2B marketing and sales communications. And this is not even gonna be a pitch. I will share with you a pitch but this is actually going to be a demo of um, how we can take a standard pitch built with PowerPoint and PDF, delivered as PDF, and turn it into something that's interactive and engaging. So um, very conversational, not formal. We'll try to personalize it and you know use the Q&A as well to make it um, conversational, please, the way it would run with a typical customer or influencer for a product like ours. Excellent, excellent. So since you are going to show us the demo, feel free to start setting up your environment. And I really, really look forward to this because whenever I hear this is going to be conversational, uh, I'm all, all happy, happy, joy, joy, because, you know, we've all seen so many of these formal pitches and presentations, and I definitely look forward to the next few minutes uh, to see how Relay2 can help presenters like us. With that, Alex, the floor is yours. Ah, thank you. So I'm talking about something very personal today. I was once upon a time a B2B marketer and I run sales operations at a company called Success Factors, which is now part of SAP. And we had a brilliant um, product, uh, very complex, adding tons of value to, to our users and buyers, but um, it was fairly hard to explain it. Uh, it. It required a long sales cycle, and um, it was hard to stand out from a noisy competitive field with the way we were communicating about it. And when we looked at it, we were communicating typically in you know, PowerPoint files and attachments, uh, lots of PDFs, random links, to videos and case studies. And um, we weren't getting the wow effect from that communication. It was getting lost um, over long sales cycles and we weren't getting any analytics about what was happening. So what you're gonna see here is an example of what used to be a PDF, uh, which you could see right now, that's sort of a PDF of relate to a pretty, pretty beautiful deck, I would say kind of on the higher end. So. Less feedback about that, but more how we can take something that's already looking pretty good uh, on a PDF format, but static and make it engaging and interactive. So what you're seeing is the version of this deck that's now powered as a relay to. It's a website. Um, you can see every page as I click through, the link is changing across the top. So every page has its own URL, which is great for sharing individual pages. And you'll see that unlike a typical PDF, if I click on the video, for example, inside, it will start playing. I'm not leaving to YouTube or Vimeo and watching cats. You know, if I close the button, I'm back inside this experience. 
and I could navigate it just like I would in an average presentation. But you notice, uh, unlike a PDF, there is more movement and engagement. I could drill in and explain certain things. One of the things that's really interesting is I could scroll through this experience. So with one click, if I go here, now what used to be a, a very kind of familiar presentation, the same thing becomes now a scrollable microsite. And that's a big win if you're trying to save some time and not to create a fancy website experience and learn to code to do that and work with, with the developers and designers. This is straightforward. You take your PowerPoint or InDesign from Adobe skills and turn them into experiences. And these experiences could be interactive. So I could drill into supporting materials if I want to, if the conversation goes a certain way. Um, I could skip through, for example, using the navigation, which you could see across the top, and I could say, hey, what's the big idea? Well, the big idea is, as you're starting to see, is that we're taking documents, which everybody uses, we all know how to do them, but they're not quite sufficient to break through the noise in today's busy world or give you a competitive advantage. We're taking that, that product and giving it the superpowers of the web, which is very expensive and cost prohibitive, and you limit it to the specialists. And the outcomes of this are really interesting. So this is your typical ROI or logo slide that you could see here. But what's interesting is this is actually interactive. And so I could drill into, for example, a case study and actually see the details of how this, you know, largest professional services organization in the world is using our platform uh, to drive better sales because these are now not just standard presentations like their competitors are using, they're using interactive microsites that support very long sales cycles with a lot of complex offerings. And so you could go and validate all these areas right, right inside your presentations. The other, you've seen one type of video, which is um, was, was um, just kind of a company intro, very common, but you could actually create interactive videos from slides and start seeing one of another That's testimonial from one of our customers right inside the presentation. Uh, and that allows you to, to have breaks where the, there's you know, different types of mediums that are consumed by different people. So somebody who is consuming this completely on their own could jump in and really they, if they care about customer voice, they could go into that. A common uh, question is, you know, what's so special about you? And this is um, another um, kind of approach is you could dive into subsections of that question and say, hey, look, we have amazing customers. We are rated uh, on G2 as the best product for creators, for marketers, and for salespeople. This is really special from our point of view. So we want our users to discover it. And you see I'm pointing here uh, to this. And so this is in a nutshell what Relate2 does. You could see I could flip back between presentations and slides. Um, I, I have... Um, inside here call to actions that allow me to to do some things like email or right inside relate to i could go and book a meeting um which i encourage all of you to do uh to follow up and explore how this presentation can help me do things the sharing right now for this document is public uh so you could go and immediately um put it on the web uh but also i could uh, you know take a thumbnail and copy it and have engaging email out of the box right right here. So these are some of the quick wins was relate to. If you're worried about like, oh, do I have to get away from PowerPoint and, and change my things? Not really. You could just have this very high, um, high PowerPoint-like experience. But you'll notice this navigation that we've covered has a lot of other things in here available in a click of a button. I could go to any other case study I could go to any other buying resource. I have more or less the entire sales journey here laid out. So depending on where the conversation goes, I could drill into a study for Salesforce that's not easily embedded inside this presentation and goes for that right now. Or I could come back to the original presentation all in one click without disinterruptions. So with that, I'll pause for a second and ask you, where do you want to take this presentation? Do you want to hear about analytics? All right, all right, all right. Very good, very good. So you you promised conversational, and it was somewhat conversational. Yet one of the issues with 
you know, relying purely on the conversational aspect is structure. I mm -hmm. think you could structure this in a whole new way that really pulls us in differently. I felt you spent too much time in the very beginning talking about your background and without really, really pulling me in with something that would catch my attention and then carry it over. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see on the timer on my screen, this is not your total time. You didn't talk for three minutes and 38. This is the overtime. So you talked oh. for six minutes and 38 oh. seconds, which is twice as long as we originally uh, allotted for. Okay. So that to me tells me that uh, that conversational approach, yes, it is appealing, but it still needs to be fairly well prepared so that you can use the structure in the allotted time. Now, we are all amongst friends here, so it doesn't really matter all that much, but sometimes you might be in a situation where time really, really matters. And just keep an eye on your own timer, uh, you know, let it run in the background, maybe even set uh, a notification so that you hear about 10 seconds before the time is up or your phone vibrates at that time, and that will help you there as well. But that's enough from me right now. Let me open the discussion with uh, Massimo. Massimo, what kind of feedback and questions do you have for Alex? Because as he said before, this isn't only about pitch feedback, but also to hear from us as presenters whether we see any value in this type of tool. Yes, thank you. Well, it was, I mean, beautiful, professional. I would um, say that whoever designed that is really a truly professional graphic uh, UI designer, whatever it was beautiful. I, I can say it's probably the best ever PowerPoint or slides we've ever seen in Pitching the Zone. So congratulations on that. Like Claudio said, uh, at the beginning, you spent 30, 40 seconds uh, describing your background, which is great, but then you were just showing the first page of your presentation, which had nothing to do with your background. So just maybe put something else related to your background. And since you ask also for, I'm a software engineer by, by education and passion. So I, I really love the product. In a way, I didn't really understand the, uh, how easy it would be to transform or export or import a PDF or PowerPoint into your solution. You didn't, you just showed your one and the result, but I didn't really get a feeling if like you need an engineer to do that, a software developer, or just somebody who knows a little bit, or just any, any guy with a little bit of experience. And what scared me a little bit was that you said that this documentation can uh, can also be used alone. So you can give this thing instead of a PDF to somebody else and they can just browse through that. Well, my question would be, is there a way from within your software to force the user to follow a path? Because what you did, while totally beautiful, left me totally drunk. I had no clue where you were going, how to go where, and I didn't see a, a, a path, a path, a, a, Really, and and so if you gave me that, I would be lost without really understanding where should I go. So <clears throat> from a product point of view, I would like to know if there's a way to kind of force the user to, to go where you want them to go instead of letting them explore and getting lost. But congratulations again for the totally professional uh, graphic on that, thank you. Thanks. Well, I, I could answer really quickly on the, the first question. I think, um, Massimo, the, this is the sort of, it depends. So there's the version of Relate to where you just upload your PDF and magically you get a number of these things from sharing to branding to um, optimized kind of navigation. 
and extracting any links that you may have inside your PDF in an immersive way. And then you can, you know, and in our case, this is quite true. In this example, you could do all sorts of interesting things that helps you win awards as a digital experience uh, company. So it's low barrier, high ceiling is the way I would describe it. Similar to products like Airtable, which you could start, you know, to, to get some success with, but you could spend quite a lot of time uh, building out a replace, you know, a sophisticated platform. So that's question one. Question two on the navigation control. I think if you're really worried about that, you would just have a much more simple uh, single passage uh, setup. In this case, we obviously, you know, want to show how we're drinking our champagne and eating our caviar. So we are focused a lot more on the, what I would call a self-guided experience where people do care, they want to explore, but, but it's a very good question. That's not always the necessary route. And sometimes you just really want very linear route uh, that many of our customers use and that's supported as well. I will say this, the world is moving more to a non-linear consumption uh, because that's what people are trained for. And, you know, just sort of the, that's a trade-off that we're supporting with this platform. So few people want to go sit and linearly consume an 80 page document, especially if they're a busy audience. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much. And thanks for, for answering these questions in this fashion. I want to move on to Michael and Michael, as always, he left a couple of valuable comments in the chat uh, box as well. One of them I particularly like, I felt like I was being sold at times. And that reminds me of a quote. I forgot who said the quote, but the quote goes along the line of, uh, we all love to buy, but we hate being sold to. So Michael, uh, can you elaborate on some of the comments, especially also as it relates to who is this for? Yeah, the, the one thing that I commend you on is you have energy um, as you're presenting. But that energy to me felt like an infomercial where you had a very limited time and you're trying to pack everything in. And so you had to talk quickly. Um, and the way that you talked about stuff, you, you were like, well, I got to show you this, I got to show this, I got to show that. Blah, 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 and it all, it all came out at once. Um, so it, while, again, love the energy and, and you obviously are, are very passionate about it, it comes through that way. Um, I made a comment about the, the demo thing and, and Nathan, here's my, here's my qualify it. So I asked, is it reasonable to do a demo in three minutes of all of the things that you're trying to get across? I don't think you, you can, because I don't think you had a person you were talking to specifically. I don't know who your target was. So if you were talking to a marketing professional who was looking to help understand how to track analytics for materials that are being presented, take that tack talk to that persona and you'll get a much clearer view to your end of goal of heading a decent coverage of what your product does in the three minutes and offer them all kinds of insight of what they can get out of it. Um, if you talk to everybody who goes, I can take a PDF and turn it into this great micro website. Okay, who, who does that? I mean, it, when I look at PDFs, if I'm looking at a PDF, is this for documentation purposes because we were out in the field and I need to pull something up on a tablet? Maybe if it's someone who's offline, they may want the PDF. So, you know, if there's, there's different people who will look at different aspects of what those things are. Building into, um, you're looking at someone who's, who's doing corporate communications for perhaps a um, uh, board report, annual report. This looks great for that. Now you can create that instead of a, a static PDF. Now you can have this be able to move around quickly and easily and have some more uh, dynamic uh, aspects to it. But the people who build that, that form are going to be in your accounting group. Are they the ones that are actually going to be building this kind of tool or building into this kind of tool? Is that your audience as accountants who build uh, annual reports or is it the marketing teams who are doing corporate communication. So when I, when I was here, you kind of made a whole thing like anybody can do this, put a PDF from here and does it. And, and while that's true, I'm not sure anybody would want to do that. It may be very specific people who want to do it. And so if you're doing a message, you need to hone in on who that is mm -hmm. and talk to them and tell them the story about what that is. Because again, I felt like I, at the end, I really was unclear and who you were trying to sell yeah. this to. 
but I did feel like it was a lot of, a lot of like a hard sell, but it was a lot of getting it in quickly to tell you all the great features we have in this, in this one product. And I wasn't really clear on the story on, on the, I you said it a couple of times in terms of the why, but it didn't, didn't sink in as like, oh, that's why you do that. Yeah. Anyway, that's, that's my, my feedback. Really excellent, helpful. excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And moving right along to Stuart. Stuart, what kind of feedback do you have for Alex? Well, thank you, Alex. It looks like a really interesting uh, product and I enjoyed the presentation. One thing I would normally say to someone who is presenting and showing us slides is you want to decide where our focus is. Is it the slide? Is it the presenter? And you presented us with a lot of information, both on the slides and from what you were saying. Actually, I think you did a great job compared to some people because it, it wasn't like, oh, am I listening to you or looking at the slides? But overall, I feel like there was too much information there. And so I think building a little bit on what Michael was saying, perhaps a little bit less is more here and focus what you really want to get across to us. Another thing I thought was I would really like to see a bigger contrast between that PDF that you shared at the beginning and then the product here. So I wonder if, if, if your company's PDF was already very good, maybe it's not the best example. Maybe you can show us a much more ordinary PDF and then magically, how is it translated so that we really get that, that contrast. And I, I had in my mind throughout your presentation, what's so special about this? And fairly late on, you did then answer that. I liked that slide that you had that looked at all different ways in which it was special. But I think the thing I'm still left with at the end was how does this work? And is it as simple as here's a PDF, click, upload, Ooh, that's amazing. Or is it in effect, I'm copying and pasting bits from the PDF across, in which case am I saving time at all? Or should I just start with your thing? That's still a little unclear for me. Mm -hmm. and, and I would like that resolved. But yes, very, very interesting product. Thank you for the presentation. Wonderful feedback as usual. Thank you very much, Stuart. And moving over to Rick. Rick, what kind of feedback do you have for Alex? Okay. Uh, Alex, I agree with a lot of the other comments. Uh, one thing at the beginning, you said no wow effect and no analytics. And those are really two presentations to two different groups. So I was, if you want to talk about analytics and how each page has its own URL and people can you know, use something like it's an Eloqua or something similar with marketing that they know which pages people looked at, that's a different presentation. I think most of the presentation you gave would be to someone who has that PDF deck who wants to make it an interactive microsite. And looking at it and from you know, my experience on doing things like that, what I like what you said is you know, taking a document, breaking through the noise and the superpowers of the web. I thought those were words that really stood out. And because everyone's seen a plain PowerPoint deck or a PDF, and it's just getting that to break through the noise. That is to, I think, going to catch people's attention. Mm -hmm. uh, in a short demo, though, I think, you know, it, to keep it within three minutes, if you're just focusing on that, I agree, you know, Stuart had said, you know, show a plain PDF and then show the microsite. And I think looking through it, what my comment was, it was almost like you saying, here's my PDF, here's my microsite, and in between, and then a miracle occurs. You know, it's like, and I've, I've done enough on WordPress about, and, you know, web design, knowing that a lot of what you had in there was someone who coded it, put all the menus in place, and made it some kind of interactive experience for a specific audience. So I think that's something that, you know, I would be skeptical of the product as a person preparing that saying, well, there's got to be more than that. And I've got to pay someone not necessarily to do the coding, but to do all the structure of it. So someone's going to be able to follow it because you, you mentioned consume on your own. So if this is someone who missed the presentation that you did in mm -hmm. person, for someone to consume it on your own, you've got a lot of work 
just setting up those menus, whether you're scrolling up and down or web page to web page and embedding the videos, you know, it's a lot probably easier than getting people to do the coding, but I think it's just a lot of work to get everything in the right order to get your message across and to get people to follow through to get to that call to action. So I think that's something that you've, you've got to really say that, you know, you're not going to have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars for coders mm -hmm. to build a microsite. This right. is 10 hours of coding to get that. And here's a template of a typical thing with case studies and that for this type of audience. Here's another menu to build it for this type of audience. So I think that that would make it much more powerful for people to get it because I think that they're what you have now. The just skepticism. So you're still saying this, this is too good to be true, basically. That was kind of if I hear correctly. Yeah. And so I, you either show how quickly you could go from PDF or or at least times time stamp it like this took that much yeah. time yeah i think that that to me is the key that it it is you know five or ten hours of coding and we at relay two can help you with a template uh another well, thing we don't code. this is we are no code just to be clear yeah uh, but but it is a SaaS tool that allows you to do more you know advanced interactive things and so that that is um so i think you're you're really helping here we should time stamp how much yeah, yeah this, I, it takes to get from A to B. Yeah, you know, or just just a simple thing of like, here's my PDF and here's my video, and I just put these things in my menu and hit render or whatever the, the button is, and, and it's 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 on the site. I did like that scrolling thing. You didn't mention iPad, but that was what I thought. It's like you know, someone's looking at it on a phone instead of yeah. on a computer, looking on an iPad. They're yeah. scrolling through, and it's again, you've you've built that along that audience interest. So you've kind of done that roadmap for them. You know, mm -hmm. look at this, look at the experience. Here's a, you know, a testimonial. Here's the call to action, but you're putting it in, in that order for them and they just scroll through on their phone or their iPad. So I think that, that you can mention is, is the advantage of that. So, but yeah, I, I like the concept. I think it's just more of getting rid of the skepticism and, you know, you have something standing out, but to me, people have seen microsites before they've seen static, PDFs, and I think they think that it's hundreds of thousands of dollars of coding yeah, to get yeah, from A yeah. to B. And if you've got a quick way of doing that, that you know someone can do without a, a whole coding department or spending you know thousands and thousands for web designers and, and programmers, then you know focus on that and 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 make it real. Show show how simple it is. But great job, Alex. We're, we're going to see some more. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Rick and Nathan. What kind of feedback right. can you provide? First, we want you to come back again. So you are welcome to sign up for another session. We've had people come back three and I think even sometimes four times. So feel free. This is an iterative process. And what you did here reminds me of what people do when they're absolutely head over heels about their product and they want to show you every single possible feature and function that's in there. And you forget that it's not about the features. It's about what the features do, those benefits that, uh, that some people have already mentioned here. So uh, Massimo hit it straight on the head when he said he was drunk with features. And that's kind of what happened is you gave us so much to drink. Uh, it was like our heads were spinning at the end. So in terms of structure, I recommend if this is going to be a demo, don't spend a minute and two seconds telling me what you're going to do. Just do it. And I think we've all alluded to the fact that I think what would make this a very powerful demo is to say, well, let me just show you. Here's a PDF. It's got three pages on it, right? Blah, blah, blah. Let me show you what happens when we pull that in. Click, pull it in. Now, I, I can already hear what you're thinking, but that's going to screw up my demo because of all those other freaking features I want to show people that don't come in. Okay, I get that. That's fine. But just show me how quickly I can bring something in and what the result is. And then set that to the side and move to what's done. Bring up that more powerful demo that you showed us. Uh, so, so Nathan, if I double click on that, th this is something we've done with, with a customer or two, but it's sort of you do the quick upload of that and you get 80% of the features out of the box mm -hmm. and then stop that process and then go to, and here's the, you know, if you do spend some time to Rick's point earlier, you know, if after 10 hours, this is what this could look like. Am I getting that right? Yes, exactly. Exactly. And building in that, 
in about 10 hours with dragging and dropping and no coding and doing this, you can turn this PDF into something like this, even though it's not a one for one, right? So I feel like that the fact that the, the next part of your demo could be anything, could be what you showed us today, but always start with something that grounds every one of us to understand, well, how the hell does this even work? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that would go a long way. And then I'd break your demo down into three basic areas, just something very simple, then something a bit more complex, and then mm -hmm. perhaps something that shows the you know analytics and you can make mm -hmm. it get better and better and better. Or frankly, I believe Claudio and I would actually suggest start with your strength when you go over to that. Start with your number one strength and key competitive advantage, and then move on to the quote unquote lesser features. Don't wait mm. and save your best feature for the last because they might have to get off the demo early. They might tune out by that time, might get, you know, they're doing their emails. So start with your strength. There's more we can talk about, but we are out of time. And in general, yes. you know, if you yes. use things like your superpower terms, I love the idea of planting that seed that people can win awards, potentially win awards for their communications when they take their static docs and turn them into yours. I think that's a pretty powerful, oh, future promise that you're making to your audience. But please come back again. And thank you for joining us. Thank you. This was incredibly helpful. Can't thank you enough. Super insights. I'm recording and writing all this down. And uh, I, I think you're doing a great service for the community was your, well, you know, giving your time. This is, this is incredibly helpful. Thank you very much, Alex. And we appreciate, of course, that you appreciate this. And I can only double down on Nathan's invitation. Go back, look at the recording, take your notes, start to implement those kind of changes and then come back. Come back and see, you know, how well um, has our feedback and the input worked for you and i already look forward to seeing you coming back and in the meantime uh yes we are out of time so i wish all of you a wonderful day afternoon evening wherever you are and a big big thanks to all of the coaches for spending your valuable time and making your experiences available to our weekly presenters here with that Enjoy the day. See you. Bye-bye.